What's up, Rockstars? How's it going? Today, I'm going to be telling you about my top 10 board games for next year. These are the ones I'm super excited about. You're going to see me pumped. You're going to see me get goosebumps. It's going to be a good time. Let's get to it. As always, I'd like to start with a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. It's a community run channel and it is all thanks to them. So thank you so much for your support. If you can even afford a dollar a month, that may be a little to you, but it adds up to a lot to me. I greatly appreciate it. It's an expensive hobby. It takes a lot of effort to make these videos for you. And I'd be very grateful for your time and your uh, generosity. So there is a link down below to that. I'd also like to give out a huge shout out to today's sponsor for this specific video, Idle Firefighter Tycoon. Now, why am I telling you about this? It's because it's actually a lot of fun. Let me tell you about it a little bit. Idle Firefighter Tycoon is actually a lot of fun. If you're anything like me, I run this YouTube channel. I have regular work and I have a family of six. So it keeps me away from video games I, I normally enjoy doing, but I can't progress in them. That's where the idle features come in so that I can just spend a few moments, open up the app, you know, set my guys up or buy some stuff or do some things. And then they keep working. I keep progressing in the, the game so I can actually do stuff and get enjoyment out of it without dedicating hours and hours of time into it. And that's really nice. But when I do have time to actually sit down and play it, they actually have these events, these like live ops that I can compete with other players with. Essentially, you're like uh, going on this like tropical paradise thing. And then there's you, you just try to build the, a really good fire station there, which is super cool to do. I really enjoy those kind of things things in these games and of course there's also more like content than I can probably even ever get to there's a lot there's like three new fire stations and like two new cities that they've added uh, and then there's fire trucks can also be like ambulances and stuff like that so you can like fight all sorts of emergencies which is really cool and then there's also like these fire captains that are new that are really cool they're essentially like these special characters that you can like do special things with and you like loot them from the boxes and the, that typical stuff it's really nice and all looks really really good uh really impressed with the visuals of course as well uh this is something that isn't necessarily board game related but is something that i enjoy is that i'm interested in and that's why i chose to show it to you guys today because i really enjoy this content and i think you would like it too definitely you could literally follow the link down below you could download it now you could get started playing this game that isn't like invasive with its monetization that you can get ad free that has all these like good business practices that's also a fun game Game, and you could do that while this video is even playing. So there is a link down below. Feel free to check it out. Helps out the channel. Really appreciate it. And of course, I think you'll enjoy it as well. So hope you do. All right. And with that, let's get back to the video. Here is our keys. Our keys is something you might not have expected on here, but it's definitely there for a reason. My wife loves the Egyptian theme. If you're a long time viewer of the channel, you would know this. If you aren't, welcome. Uh, if you are and you haven't subscribed, Subscribe. It helps me out. Helps you out. Everybody wins. Seriously though, Arquise looks cool for a few reasons. First of all, the Egyptian's cool. One of the big selling points for me is how short it is. Now I know that sounds weird, but in a modern times now where these narrative games promise 300, 400 plus hours, infinite replayability, all this stuff, I almost feel like I'll never experience most of what I buy at this point. It's bad enough buying stuff that I don't play enough of, but then like buying, you know, Th three huge campaigns that I don't feel I'll play at all or I worry I won't play at all having something like I believe our keys advertised 30 hours sounds awesome I get 30 hours of gameplay out of it that's plenty that's a ton of gameplay it's really nice it's on the cheaper end because of that and there's still reusable stickers and replayability and expansions stuff like that so I could still get more but it's something that I can actually complete which I really appreciate like that's actually a selling point for me is something more manageable and I also feel like then there's probably no filler in it too. I always worry that you get that kind of like Gloomhaven style filler where it's like, I don't even know. I'm just going through stuff at this point. That, that kind of bloat that I think it'll ignore. Also, Steampunk, which is cool. And Egyptian. I love it. I think that's cool. Also, they have a um, freaking Hippo Mini with a Warhammer. What more could you want? 
Well, I'm glad you asked because another thing it has that has me excited is some a little bit of 3D-ness. In fact, the game board itself, as you can see, has these little walls. Now, they're not huge walls. So they're not blocking line of sight or anything annoying like that, but they still add to the thematic presence of it a lot. And I really appreciate that. I think it's super cool. Really, really dig this. Now, I backed this quite a while ago. It's late, but it's getting there. And I'm really excited to play it once it arrives next year. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, right? <laughs> Um, but really, really am. Now, I don't remember everything I backed. I think I backed just about all of it. I might have missed one of the ladies here. I can't remember. I get, it's all Patreon money, so you guys help get content on this channel. It's an expensive hobby. I believe this Mima here, I can't remember if I actually put put in the money for it. I think she was like the early back reward or something like that. I missed it. Either way, it, it, that's like 18 euros. Uh, but she looks cool, and she could see her experience cards and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just don't know if I foot, I foot the bill for it or not. Uh, again, I'm am, am a little bit limited there, but again, if you can help, there is a link down below. Greatly appreciate it. Um, but either way, really excited to play this. Like, it looks super cool. Next up, we have Madara, which is exactly what I was talking about, except I think I might actually get through this. Let me explain why. First of all, huge RPG focus on it, especially around character and leveling up. I love leveling up and the amount of customization that you can do on your characters here sounds awesome. Really dig it. I love all the weapon choices, all the abilities, stuff like that. I think that's super cool. Um, like Storm Sunder, all the characters actually have a personality. You're not just like vessels where stuff happens. You're not Harry Potter where it's just stuff happens around him and he happens to like react to it. It's like you, these characters are actively making choices and doing things and have personalities and I dig that. Now the miniature quality is not the best and I hope if you're watching uh, Brooklyn that you push to uh, upgrade this. I would love to see some really high quality minis in the next act two and three. However, they still paint up quite well as long as you're fine with painting on some faces, but they do paint up quite well and they are, I mean, you can see how brightly colored this is. This would be such a fun painting experience. So I'm really excited for that. I love the brightness of it. I don't love necessarily all the anime of it, but um, uh, the vast majority of it, I actually really dig. I think it's great. And like style wise, it looks cool. I love the little things like the uh, like reflective parts on the game tiles here look super cool. Very, very like meaty game that just looks interesting. And I've heard great things about it. Several of my patrons have actually played it and beat it and painted it. And it looks great and sounds great. Another thing that I really like about it and why I'm excited to see Act 2 and 3 delivered is because Alex and Brooklyn here would be a success story. They would have delivered a massive thing. Act 1 is already huge to deliver all of it and realize their thing after so much of what they've been through and what they've gone to, you know, put this out. It's just a good story and a good kind of support story to really dig, um, I, I guess, the entirety of it. I think it'd be great to see that fully completed. Uh, I. I'm sure they would like to see it even more than me, but uh, really, I just think it's a cool idea as well. So really interested in seeing that next year, hopefully, maybe. Next up, we have Limbo Eternal War 1.5. This is actually active right now. As you can see, I am backing it because I am a fan. It's a huge, it's like, like milestone for me when it comes to quality minis, when it comes to uh, interesting and nuanced gameplay. Uh, when it comes to battle rule books, that's what the 1.5 is for. Um, I'm really keen and excited to get more of it. Fantastic game. And at, as long as they can kind of get the smooth sailing, they are in for, I think, a huge success going forward and into the future. Because, again, fantastic. One of the cool things is, if you didn't know, if you haven't been watching me very long, every year, uh, kind of in the early December, I go over and say, here's everything I'm looking forward to. Here's all the stuff. I go and I work and I get exclusives and all that kind of stuff. So first time view stuff of what's coming up next year. And I showed one of the minis that you only just now showed off. Really excited for it. Um, I believe it's actually in an update. So let me go on to that real quick before I move on because I like I like going full circle like that, right? Okay, and here's kind of where we are from the beginning of, you know, like before 2021 even rolled around. This lady right here, oh, I, everybody's getting the Denervia, Denervia, uh, some kind of succubus person. But look at, the, I mean, look at the dress on Alicia here. Isn't that fantastic? It is so great. Or even, I mean, just the poses of how you're leaning on your feet and how you're holding your helmet or it just really, really great minis. Great gameplay, 
really fun. They, they're they promising a solo. I don't know how good that'll be, but uh, excited to try it out, especially if it's Quomp as well. I'm not much of a solo player. Anyway, that's coming out, and I hope it comes out in 2022, because I look forward to playing it. Next up, we have Storm Sunder Heirs of Ruin. I already mentioned this one. What a great game. Um, if I... I've already, I've said it actually a lot of times. If Bioware made a board game, it would have been Storm Sunder. Uh, it just, the, the characters in there are so great. The leveling up system is so great. It's, it's, as it's, the leveling up system is so cool. It's even thematic in that, like, one of your cards that you have is like a personality card. And that personality card can change as you make decisions, as you, you know, progress the story, like, drastically. And that affects, like, your, 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 your gameplay. Too. So it actually matters. In fact, good guys can become bad guys, and or their stats change, or they or they morph into this or that, or that. Crazy stuff happens. Epic storyline. Great gameplay. You're always doing different stuff. It's not just a same old scenario over and over again. Really good. Um, it's kind of easy flowing game. And again, the story fantastic. The art super cool. Again, a little bit of the Egyptian stuff. Super excited to play the full Storm Sunder. Really looking forward to it. Next up, of course, I have Osworn Into the Deepwood. I love Grimdark. I love the theme of this game. It's fantastic. Um, the gameplay is really good, too. It's narrated by James freaking Cosmo. He sounds fantastic. It's audiobook worthy, for sure. They have people from the Black Library uh, working on this, so it's going to be written well. It's going to be read to you well. The gameplay is really good. Um, I'll, I'll share a quick, fun story. Uh, so I was... First time playing, right? It was kind of early days, and I picked the Ursa Warbear because, of course, I'd pick a freaking Warbear. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the big bear. I charge up to the Broodmother, and I attack, and I'm like, yeah, that was awesome. And the Broodmother goes, kills me. Just stomps me down. Just turn one. It was so funny. They've actually changed a little bit based off some of that kind of stuff, uh, the difficulty early on. So it kind of eases you into the gameplay. So, you know, don't just charge right in front of the brood mother like you're about to tank everything she's about to throw at you. You won't. <laughs> so they've kind of changed that early on, which is nice as well. Uh, another fun one is this worm here, too. I'm only talking about them because they're the only public ones. Um, I was totally eaten by this thing, and it was like a Drax moment from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 where I'm inside, like, attacking, trying to you know, go, and they're chasing me as you know my teammates trying to get me out as I'm getting hurt, getting knocked into things. Crazy time. Really fun gameplay. Really great moments. Great narrative. Great theme. And it was at a good price, too. So, like, what more could you want? It looks awesome. It's going to be awesome. Now, before I move any farther, I want to see how well you guys know me. What do you think my number one is? In fact, I if you can guess that and you want to double up and really know me, what do you think my number two is? I bet you won't guess my number two. You might know my number one. I, I did not I'd be a pretty open book. But uh, what do you think my number two will be? I would be curious. I'll let you guys know if you're right or wrong. It'll be It'll be kind of fun. Uh, I think so. Tenaris Adventures is the next one. Super excited about this. I loved Arena. It was simple. It was nuanced. Instead of adding 30 mechanics and hoping that it means strategy, they had a handful of mechanics that were super nuanced and intricate in how they worked together. They had a great PvP system with some good party building that was fun and interesting, and you could kind of theory craft around it, and you could even then you could play them better or worse depending on your style and what you did. And it had like a cool arena thing with custom uh, maps where you could have teleporters and buff areas and walls and traps and stuff like that, which was super fun. But then it didn't just have an amazing PvP mode. It had a great narrative campaign as well. Very much a tabletop bo RPG board game. It had riddles and puzzles. It had um, narrative like side quests in the middle of your questing. It had interesting boss mechanics with, uh, like, like a, for instance, I, I fought a, a dragon that had this little orb thing we had to deal with and stuff like that. I won't go into any more detail around that, but like really, really cool stuff. Really enjoyed my time with Arena. And Tenaris promises to do better than that even when it comes to NPCs you can like have relationships with and send off on quests and they can help you out. And obviously freaking amazing looking minis like this. They really upped their game in the miniature department. It looks great, looks fantastic. There's looks like there's so much fun stuff here. They have a pet class. I love pet classes. I'm gonna be playing Diablo 2 just to play Necromancer again because I want some freaking skeletons. 
skeletons. I won't even go werewolf until a second playthrough through, <laughs> or I'll just do fast speed werewolf. And then I still have only played Necromancer. So like, there's a ton of really cool stuff that I'm interested in this game. It looks great. Look at this guy. Look at that ogre. My goodness, it's going to be fantastic. I'm super excited for Daenerys. Okay, we're getting up there. Next, Mythic Battles Ragnarok. I played the prototype of this and loved it. I loved their addition to the, uh, the the troops. I think that's a smart addition. I love Norse mythology. My wife likes Egyptian. I like Norse, so I'm really into that. Mythic Battles Pantheon is a fantastic game that I enjoy greatly, and I can't wait to add more with this. All the characters and monsters and stuff I, I played in the preview copy seemed unique and interesting. There's people who get stronger the more they get hurt and stuff like that. A very, very um, kind of just new things to experience and try out and pair up and I can't wait to combine them uh, more. I actually already have a little bit and it's a lot of fun. So really excited for this and again, cool looking minis too. So uh, definitely going to be on my cool minis, great gameplay, cool theme, count me in. That, that's where I'm at. Okay. And with that, we are about to go into top three. These are the top three, starting at number three, Chronicles of Druengar, Age of Darkness Apocalypse. That's a long name. I was going to call it Apocalypse. Chronicles of Durangar was a lot of fun. Now, I played with the expansions in it, and how it works is, like, you you play the story, and it says, and if you have this expansion, you can play that now. And you kind of go and play it, and then you come back. And that's cool and fun, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it because it introduced new enemies, and it uh, introduced this kind of a, a change of pace and, and theme and stuff like that. And I think it helps the game a lot. If you didn't play like that, you probably should. Trust me, it's better for it. But Apocalypse is just better no matter what. To the point where even if you don't play regular Chronicles of Dreamer, which Apocalypse is very much a just continuation of the story, just keeps on going, you auto level up and play just Apocalypse. Apocalypse is great. There's like hidden NPCs, there's some I never even found, there's one I kept alive and I cared a lot about them, and then something huge happened and I need to know stuff. Well, okay. Anyway, like there's a legit story, it's really, really well done a ton better when it comes to the story. Not that the first one was any slouch per se, but this one was just really good. They they're on they're they're going on all cylinders. They're they're checking all the boxes. They are on fire when it comes to apocalypse. Really really enjoyed it a lot. So, uh very interested in that. Uh so that's exciting. I'm really really interested to that. And again, they have freaking free horsemen apocalypse minis that look freaking cool too. So, um yeah, I'm excited. Now, before I go to my top two, because I told you to guess, I want to know your top ten. So we'll come, we'll come back to that, but I want to know for a very specific reason. Number two is Darkest Dungeon. I don't know if you guessed this one or not. I am super pumped about this. I love the video game. Like I said, I like video games. Again, there's a link down below to that uh, Firefighter Tycoon, which I've actually been enjoying more than I probably should. But uh, <laughs> anyway, that's what they get for having me download it. Uh, Darkest Dungeon is a fantastic video game, and it looks to me like they, Mythic Games, took that video game, took what the core of what made that video game great, which is the kind of the, the party building and the you know order of your people and kind of strategizing when you're uh, confronted with new uh, situations and how to handle that and knowing better how to handle that if you kind of fail the first time, stuff like that, uh, really, really well. And they incorporated that into a board game that isn't hindered by that, but instead is better for it. And so it's very much a board game. And, 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 and so it's playable by more than one person. That was my biggest worry. It's like, you know, because Darkest Dungeon is one player and they want to have this one to four players. So how's it going to work? It works quite well. Like they have it in the map, they have it like where it, you're in two teams of two, like you're separated, you have to like get up to, you know, close to each other or whatever. And so you're trying to work through that kind of scenario. There's all kinds of interesting things they're doing. You're definitely concerned about who slotted where. That's still important because again, that's important in the video game. The minis are going to be fantastic. It's made by Mythic Games. They've been doing great there. Since Super Fantasy Brawl, they've been on fire when it comes to actually making like quality board game right up front. They always had like the promise of it before, but now they really do. Solomon Kane was fantastic. Really enjoyed Solomon Kane. Loved Solomon Kane. So really interested in this as well. Super excited for it. The theme's cool. The IP's cool. The components I'm sure are gonna be cool. I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Which brings me to my number one, which should be any, no surprise to anybody who's been around this channel for a while. Aeon Trespass Odyssey. What can I say? This, hands down, my favorite co-op boss battler. Now, here is why. 
it's a co-op part. Now they have the triskelion, which is cool, and they have this and they have that, and of course how the AI works is interesting, and how it reacts is cool, and doing the different stages of the boss is interesting, and learning the boss is cool. All that's cool. But all the boss battlers have that. Uh, not the triskelion, but it, it's still it's not something that's gonna like be like my number one, right? What makes it my number one is the co-op part of it. I have never played a boss battler that felt so much like we were playing a combo across the whole team and you are only a part of that and your whole role is to set up somebody else's half the time and, and like in a satisfying way right so that we never stopped talking the entire time my voice was actually a little sore just from the constant discussion about everything and it wasn't like ap we were constantly doing things but then we were reacting to things right so it's like okay so if your your turns before me so it's not my turn but i'm already talking right if you can move him over there away from that, then I'll be in the perfect position to where I can just do that attack and lay down some tokens so that she can do the big attack. And that's the one that's going to be big because that's based off that card that oh, we know is coming up, right? And so then he does that, but he's not able to move it, right? And so now I'm now it's my turn. I'm like, okay, well, I can't get those tokens for you, so I'm just going to do this move for you. And then the, she pipes up and says, well, no, actually, if you do that, we'll end up still better because that card's still coming. I'm like, oh, that's right, that card, I forgot that. And this goes on the whole time is you're strategizing and you're working together as a team laying down these tokens to help your other people do it properly and being able to uh, like uh, deal with the ai cards in a way to where you can try and line up a, a certain attack with the certain tokens against a certain card it works fantastically it is so cool and they i the 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 theme is well i mean yeah, they got the metroidvania map they got this like crazy theme like i still want to know what the freak is up with those snails those snails will haunt my dreams i want to know what those snails are all about please tell me i can't wait <laughs> seriously really really cool i mean just just thinking about the like mind stuff that's going on there is super cool it's so awesome i am getting literally goosebumps just talking about it. i hope you can appreciate that this like sincerity here it's super cool and I loved it. The theme's cool. You're playing these giant titans. The models are cool. Uh, the, the super action poses on a lot of them. A unique storyline, kind of the Greek mythos kind of stuff going on there. I love almost everything about this. It looks so good. And uh, j just in case you haven't seen my news updates, because I do those all the time again, let's subscribe if you haven't. Um, the, the minis are looking great. Like these minis are fantastic. They're really good. This is going to be a game that uh, changes, I think, a lot of people's perspectives on what a board game can be. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm super excited about it. And of course, it's my number one. There was no question. It was it was literally the first thing I wrote down on my list, and it never moved from its spot. Uh, so that's it. That's all I have, guys. I hope you appreciate that. Now, I told you I want to know your top 10. Here's why. Please, down below, tell me your top 10 and tell me why, because I want to know what maybe I should be, like, especially if it's different than mine, because I want to know what I should maybe be looking at. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I haven't even seen something. Let me know. I want to be as excited about other games like I am about Aeon Trespass Odyssey. So if you're excited about something, I want to know about it. Again, this is a community-run channel. I'm not just saying that crap because I want you to join Patreon even for a dollar a month. That's not the that that's that's a spiel, but that's not the reason. The reason is because I make these videos for you guys, and I'm very interested in what you guys are looking forward to. So let me know down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. What are you looking forward to next year? Let me know. Really excited to kind of see what you guys are looking at because you guys know some cool stuff too. And with that. That's all I have. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Have a great rest of your day and talk to you again real soon.